Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the BJJ Foxcast. I am your host, Alex Martinez, and today I am really excited to have my friend Kenny Kim on the show. Kenny is a third-degree black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. He is also the creator and host of the Matt Made Show. Kenny, welcome, man. Man, pleasure being here. Thanks so much for the opportunity. It's always good to be here in Arizona visiting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a lot of family here, you know? Yeah, man, and you got a busy weekend, dude. Yeah, I, I didn't know it was, we were going to be this busy, but yeah, hey, it's a good thing, though. Yeah, let's talk about that for a second. We, um, You're going to be doing a seminar tomorrow in Tucson, Arizona. Tucson, Arizona at uh, Always Four Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. It's going to yep. be at 6.30 to 8.30. It's open to all teams yep. and levels. Yep. And then on Saturday, we're going to be at your place. Yep. Uh, Aries, East Mesa from yep. what? Is it 12 to 2? 12 to 2. Yep. yep. 12 to 2. Yep. And afterwards, a big party. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yep. then on Sunday, we had uh, Aries Goodyear. Goodyear right? Open Mat. Yeah. Open Mat, uh, 11 to 1. And then I fly right back out to Atlanta. How do you do it? Uh, man, you know, superhuman strength. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, you're getting older. You're, you're 25 yeah. now. Yes. So, yes, uh, yes. yeah, four going on 25, <laughs> but, uh, no man. Hey, listen, uh, thank you so much for coming on. I want to get right into it. I want to talk about your Matt made show. Mm -hmm. Matt made, uh, started, uh, what, what was it? A couple years ago. Actually, the idea started years ago. Okay. Okay. But it actually started, I would say really depends on how far we want to look back. Yeah. Let's go from the beginning, man. Let's see. So let's, the Matt Made book was really, well, I, I started to write the book right before the pandemic happened. So okay. I was already writing the Matt Made book. So the, the, the book was titled Matt Made. Yeah. The reason it was titled Matt Made was because I am Matt Made. Yeah. Kenny Kim is Matt Made and yeah. Matt Made is Kenny Kim. Meaning that's where I grew up. This is where I made many mistakes. This is where I succeeded this is where i found myself uh so i wanted to tell the story because it's a profound motivational story i think for some a lot of the younger generation especially coming up yeah especially of color yeah okay, i know even uh you know with a korean background i know there's a lot of kids that are coming up are either forced to okay you got to go to school and become this 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 that mm. if you drop out of school then you basically just go open up a liquor store or whatever your parents were doing wow. or, or yeah. your, their grand grandparents were doing, right? Yeah. So the choices weren't always there. Yeah. And so I wanted to tell my story of how uh, I wasn't always the ideal child, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, my sister was, but I was the one running out on the streets. I was the one that was causing havoc and trouble. Yeah. But the mats have kept me in line and made me... I don't know, successful in life. I'm not going to say successful just as an entrepreneur. Yeah, right. that too, but yeah. I think just in life. And so I wanted to share that story. So the vision was always there. So I, how do I start? I start with a book. Okay, well, let me write a book. Yeah. And at first I had doubts. I'm like, who's going to freaking read my book? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Who am I? Right. You know yeah. what I mean? But I started to get positive feedback. Yep. Yep. I had one mentor named Michael. He... He just basically broke it down. He's like, all these guys are nobodies until they are somebody. That's true, man. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and so I said, okay, even if I can touch one person with my book, with my story. Yeah. I've done my job. Mission I've, accomplished. Exactly. Yeah. So the book came out and then I thought it needs to be bigger. Like the feedback was amazing. Yeah. Like people were like, oh my God, I, I, I feel the exact same way. I think I grew up the same way. Yeah. And so I'm like, well, how do I get this out to the masses? Yeah. And I, you got to think, internet. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You, you got people got to watch. Yep. So I've always had this idea of a reality TV show. I say a reality TV show, but it really wasn't. It was more of a vlog style that I was thinking about. Because yeah. as you know, you- uh, You say vlog style? Yeah. Vlog? Okay, yeah. got it. Okay. As you know, uh, for the past seven, eight years- our team, mm -hmm. the, the 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 top members of our team, Kishino, me, Samir, Milton, we travel all around the world. Yeah, teaching seminars, competing, but every time we go, what I experience is the same thing. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's a different country, different city. We go, the host picks us up, or we meet them. We we go out in town and eat, you know, whatever the best cuisines are. Yeah, of that city. Yeah, right. Like this morning, we had the chorizo uh, egg plate. Right, awesome. Which was amazing. <laughs> Um, and then we train and every time we train, there's somebody that 
that tells me about their mat made story. Wow. We're literally sitting on the mat. That's it's called the mat chat. You know, mat chat. We sit there on the yeah. mats and they're like, "Man, jujitsu has helped me so much. You know, I lost some weight and da da da." It's always a story. Yeah. And then afterwards, we go out do something fun. Man, we may go to the beach. We may go surfing. We may do something. Right. So I yeah. thought, man, what if I can document this? Yeah. To show people like what this lifestyle is really about. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't about, okay, just winning championships or getting to the black belt or it was about that experience. It was about learning about another, uh, uh, positive influence that jujitsu had. Yeah. And so that's where the idea was born. I mean, so again, the infancy was years and years ago. I've always had this in the back of my head. Yeah. I just didn't know how to go about it. I mean, I don't have the, the education or the financial background to, uh, make something like this happen. So right. I always had this. So during the pandemic, right before it, I said, I got to do this. So I put a team together. I got a couple of my students. They're like, oh, yeah, I have some friends that just graduated from uh, uh, um, um, whatever, um, you know. Like like a film, film yeah, school, film school yeah. you know. <clears throat> and they're trying to get some work. Like this would be a great project to work on. Perfect. I'm like, perfect. So we got a sound guy. We got two video guys. We got a director. I said, okay, guys, listen, there's no compensation for this, but I will pay for our trip down to Florida. Awesome. You know, I, I figure, you know what, I can, I can get, spend a few thousand bucks out of my pocket. Yeah. And so we have everything set. And then, of course, one thing starts to close down at a time. One thing yeah. at a time, one thing at a time. Yeah. And, and it was right after we visited you for the Atlanta yeah, Open. Yeah, Remember that? Yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so by the time we were supposed to go film, everything shut down. And, of course, you know, even the, uh, the crew members were like, ah, oh, yeah, I don't know what's going on. I don't think I can make it. Wow. And so it basically just got put to the back burner. It was like, okay, it's dead. Wow. That's got to be frustrating. Yeah. I mean, it was frustrating, but also it wasn't because I really didn't have anything yet. It was right. just an idea. Yeah, right? yeah. So I thought, well, that was a stupid idea anyways. Do you mind if I ask what you were going to, what the project was in Florida, who you were going to be vlogging? Uh, it was actually uh, a person named Thor. Uh, he's got a school down there. And so I, I frequently visited school and taught some seminars there nice and i said you know it's close um, it's close enough for me to drive it's like five and a half hours for me to drive down so i can yeah. take the crew down there and drive down and be like hey thor i'm sure you got and he was like yeah i got a guy that's got you know a great story and he's like look i got a friend that owns a taco shop we can go eat there awesome. we can do it maybe we can go to the <laughs> beach and do some stand-up paddle boarding i'm like perfect everything that we've wanted yeah and but again it got squashed so couldn't do it right and so it was on the back burner and you know another year went by nothing happened but i i still had this like lingering like i gotta make this happen yeah, yeah and so long story short the 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 partner that i'm working with right now on this project he is a uh father to one of the kids students i don't know what we got talking about he he owns another company we're, we're out to lunch one day we started a talk and the subject came up and we said you know he was interested and uh he basically said all right well Let's do one. Cool. I said, all right, let's do one and see. That's just, I mean, we won't know until do one. Yeah. But the, the crazy thing was the numbers were crazy. So, you know, he, he knew some people in the film industry. So we met up with a group and uh, we're like, okay, this is our idea. They're like, okay, 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 great, great, great. So we'll give you a, you know, invoice and run down of what, what it may cost. Yeah. Cool. So I'm, I'm thinking, okay, all right, you know. I, don't, I mean, I really don't know. Right? Um, who, who knows, yeah. right? Yeah. But I was thinking, uh, a few thousand bucks maybe. You yeah. Know, like, they come back. <laughs> and uh, my partner, <laughs> like, throws me the thing. and said, here, take a look. For one episode, they wanted $85,000. Ouch. So it's either they didn't want to do it and just threw that number out. Yeah. Or it really costed that much. Yeah. Which I didn't know at the time. Yeah. I said, well, that's not going to work. Yeah. And so... You know, we shopped around a little bit. We weren't really like direct. I mean, we were just kind of like, okay, what if it Whatever. happens? It yeah. happens. But yeah. um, somehow we got connected to the, 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 the production team that we have now, which is like family to us. And uh, it's still not cheap. I mean, it's it's still, yeah. re I wouldn't even say relatively. I mean, I, I, it's still very expensive. People just don't know what it costs to, you know, yeah. produce these kind of uh, um, shows. Yeah. it's. I mean, we literally have an eight-man team, you know. 
you know, you got your sound guys, you got your camera guys, you got your directors, you got your editors, you got lighting. You got, yeah, you got yeah. all these guys doing their own, and we have to travel, we have to film, and we have to edit. I mean, it's just it's a lot of lot of lot of legs behind it. Yeah, but we figured it out, and so yeah, here we are. We're five episodes in. Actually, after this week, as soon as I leave Arizona, I'm going down to Mexico to film our final episode. Uh, I'm gonna keep it a secret, not tell anybody. Yeah, it's gonna be the the, the, the finale, se- season finale, season finale is yeah. gonna be amazing. Um, it's gonna be down in Playa del Carmen in Mexico. Oh, that doesn't uh, suck. With some, no, it doesn't. Yeah, uh, with some special guests, you know. Nice. Uh, plural S guests. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And uh, but our project is a lot bigger than just telling stories of just. Uh, on the episodes. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of listeners have uh, come across all these emotional videos on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook of um, individuals talking about the benefits of jujitsu, how it has uh, helped them in their daily lives, whether yeah. it's PTSD, whether it's, you know, uh, uh, you know, suicide. I mean, I yeah. mean, there's so many different, you know, <clears throat> benefits that it gives. Um, so those are little short stories that we, we film while we're on site. But the great thing is now our listeners and our viewers Everybody that's a fan of Matt Made can actually go to our web- website, mattmade.com, and share your own story. That's beautiful. At the, pri- at the privacy of your home. All you have to do is just share your story, and I prompt you through. I take you through. It takes about five minutes, and you literally record your own story. You upload it. Our editors chop it up, and we share it with the world. If you got a story to tell, make sure you guys go to mattmade.com and share your story. Now our website is like you can actually go – into different categories, emotional, family. Wow. You can go and watch those videos. And, you know, we've been getting so many DMs and emails about, like, I'm ready to get started. I'm ready to get back. I saw a story on so-and-so. I know you did a story, too, Alex, yeah, out yeah. in uh, Vegas. But, yeah, yeah it's, it's been an amazing uh, journey. It's, <clears throat> again, at its infancy, it's going to be, I mean, just I can't wait for the future. Yeah, I, I you know, what I love what you said about um, – that you know the stories on the mat chats and you know it, we've all had them we've all had them. we've we've been to seminars out of out of state or we've been training at someone's gym out of state and you just sit there and you talk to a complete stranger and they share their story with mm-hmm. you and now you've created that bond with them oh, right sure. and now when you see them at tournaments or wherever it's always a hug and hey man how's it going yeah. stuff like that what you've done what Matt made, what the Matt made show has done with their shorts, it's allowed me to have those relationships with those people as well, to build that bond with those people. I can't wait to meet them. Right. Um, you know, there was there was a a, a lady who uh, lost her son to a violent yeah. crime, mm-hmm. and I, I was barely, actually there when she was telling the story. Bro, and I barely made it through that one. Our, our entire team just kind of looked at each other and was like, "Oh my god, what did we just get on camera?" Yeah. Yeah. And that was actually like the start of the shorts. We were like, oh, my God. Yeah. People were just opening up to us. Yeah, yeah. And and the story that I shared, I never shared that story out loud with anybody. Mm-hmm. I mean, someone that went through what I went through or, or did what I did is like you kind of go kind of underground and you never talk about it, right? But once I shared that story, I felt this weight lift. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what's happening a lot yeah. of the time. And yeah. even on a mat, if I just met you on the mat and I told you my story, I mean, I'd feel better about, sure. you know, yeah. that day just go yeah. better. But now you're allowing the world to see those stories and yep. build those bonds and create those relationships mm-hmm. with people that we haven't even met yet. Right. And but the beauty of it is that not only do they get that off their chest, people, viewers watching that, they get inspired by that story. Yes. Yeah. Whether for themselves or somebody else. Yeah. And then, or see people that, used to train at a, you know, and they had a bad experience with you. Mm. Mm-hmm. Now they're like, you know what? I want to try again. Yeah. I want to do this. I want to get into this. Oh, I was 45 years old. And I thought I was, well, no, I'm going to do it. After watching this 73 year old lady, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I see the positive effects of it. Yeah. And the beauty of it is pretty soon mattmade.com is going to connect those people to the nearest gym. We have a beautiful, we have a, a, a seven thousand gyms in our in our possession right now. Wow! Which once we get cleaned up, it'll probably be down to five thousand in the United States. We're starting. So, so here. you're building that network within your website. Yes. Nice. So they can not only tell their story as they watch the stories. They're like, I want to sign up. And they just basically go to the location. They'll be able to see all the schools that are listed. Wow! And every school is going to be on there for free. If they want more, we can do more for them. But yeah. it's going to be listed on there. And the possibilities are endless. Right? They're endless. I mean, you sure. can do you can do so much with that that information so we're connecting we're connecting the dots for everybody i love it man you know what i mean yeah and so man it's 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 an exciting project and it's gonna be i'm telling you it's gonna be revolutionary yeah it's something that's never been done before and um we'll see yeah yeah so next week you're wrapping up season one or you at least have it in the can yep and then so let's talk about season one 
obviously you probably had a masterminds group or something going on like a like a brain i'm not a mastermind but a brainstorming group saying okay what stories do we want to tell and you found some awesome stories, mm-hmm. right? You just grandma, one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. She's awesome. Yeah, Dude, she's I, yeah she and you, her family. You got to meet her family and, and spend time with them. Elaine, if you're listening, we love you. Yeah, we love you. That <laughs> was such a great story. And it's funny because when that when that episode came out, Amy and I were like, Amy goes, I follow her on Instagram. I was like, so do I. <laughs> I do too. That's why I got her. <laughs> Is that how you met her? Is that how you reached out? So yeah, the year before that, I saw her at Master Worlds in Vegas. Yeah. And I sat there and I was just cheering. I didn't know who she was, but yeah. I was like, oh my yeah. God. I'm like, yeah, let's go. I mean, like, and she was like Master 7 or 8, yes. but there yeah. was nobody in her division. So she right. dropped down to like Master 4 or something wow. like that. And even though she lost, she did phenomenal. I was yeah. a big fan. I was like, man, what is her Instagram handle? Yes. I started following yeah. her. Yeah, but when we got her, I was uh, I was thinking about her. I thought, I know she trained at a Gracie Baja school. So I reached out to one of my acquaintances, one of my friends down in Alabama. I was like, hey, Khalifa, do you know where she trains? She's trained Gracie Baja. She's like, she's my blue belt. No way. I was like, oh, my God, are you serious? <laughs> and he's in Birmingham, which yeah. is like an hour and a half, two hours from Atlanta. Wow. I was like. Well, you need to ask her. We can do a story on her. Yeah. And this this episode wasn't even planned. And he came back like two hours later. She's in. I was like, holy. I was like, all right, you know what? Okay, let's do it. So I got with my Pivot. team. I said, guys, yeah. look, we got to do this. Yeah. We got to make time for this. And I love so it. We set it, it up last minute, went down, and it was probably one of the best episodes that I had. It, it's a great episode. Yeah. And, you know, one thing that happened during that episode, and, and I, you know what? I, I share, um, uh, I forget her, her, her husband's name. Um Oh gosh. Anyway, um, but he said something during the show. He was reluctant to do it because you know he didn't he didn't know you right anything right. like that. Mm-hmm. But again, I don't know because of because he's I'm not saying he's outside the jujitsu circle, but he's not actively in jujitsu. Sure. I don't think he understood that bond that we automatically have mm-hmm, based mm-hmm. on Matt made right? right because we're all Matt made. Um, we have that common bond. So asking asking that question or, or requesting that you know that kind of exposure to her family and to her to her academy, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's all sacred stuff to me, it right? Is. But we we share that common bond where we're like, yeah, Kenny, of course, let's do this, man. You know what I mean? It was, was it kind of that sure. conversation how yeah. it went? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But at the end of it, he'll say it at the end of the episode too. He was like, I didn't know what to expect, but he was like, this is the best experience we've had. That's so cool. You know? Yeah. But it's like again, it's just touching everybody's heart, man. Yeah. It's it's. it's uh, yeah, I mean it's uh, it's just been a fun ride so far, and yeah. again, I, it's it's just now beginning, you know. Yeah, yeah. So so you know, um, and we talked a little bit a uh, little bit about this earlier. Um, you know, I, I was asking you, you know, how you handle all the travel, and you know, because you do, you know, you're out here doing two seminars in a weekend. Bro. And an open mat. <laughs> yeah, and an open mat. And you had a request for a third seminar yeah, that yeah. you probably don't have time yeah, to do. Right. Um, but um, but um, you know how we, we were talking about the the future of map made talk a little bit about that what does the future of map made look like and and you know handling travel because i mean you've got a successful business right right you've got the map made show which is very successful as well you've got a family you've got a young son you've got all these things tying you to the uh, by the way he's in the Air, atlanta area marietta georgia shout out to marietta mm-hmm. cool town oh, yeah but you've got all these ties to marietta um tell me about how you're going to manage uh the next season of map made so the good thing is that I don't have to do everything on my own. Beautiful. We've got, and that should be with anything, whether it's your, you know, martial arts school, whether yeah. it's your career, whether it's your family, everybody has to do their part. Yeah. And so, especially with Matt made, like we've got, we decided, listen, we're only going to tackle what we're capable of doing. Mm. If it's something that I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with, I'm, we're going to hire an outsider to do that job. Yeah. We're going to hire, we're going to bring somebody else in. Yeah. Like, I don't know about production, right? So we hired right. a, the best production company there was. And even within the production company, they hired, they contracted out the best people for that show. Wow. Like, so they're into doing a lot of like live events and bands and stuff, but they said, okay, we need some specific camera people for this. So yeah. we, we scouted two uh, cameramen from like the local Atlanta uh, I wouldn't say local Atlanta, but a lot of films are being filmed. But yep. the, um, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, reality TV series, we, okay. we scouted those guys, and okay. those are our camera guys. Wow. You know okay. what I mean? So we scout the best people, like now, social now, media how, guys. How does that conversation go with a, with a startup? 
you know, the, the, if the guys are seasoned, they've been doing this a while, how do, how do you approach them? Like, hey, we got the startup thing. Do you pitch them the show or do you just kind of say, hey, we need camera guys? And So that our production guy handles. Gotcha. Like, okay. our, our main guy yeah. handles it. Again, that's n- that's not my job. Gotcha. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> I love that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. we basically hand it off to our team. So everybody has their part. This is what you should be good at. And this is the only thing you should be working on. Gotcha. Okay. You know, like yeah. our social media guy is, isn't going to step on our production guys right. and be like, you guys need to do this. No. Makes sense. Because yeah, that makes he sense. only takes the footage that he has and then chops it up to makes it what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. See what I mean, yeah. I don't step on my partner. My partner does all the the the, the behind the scenes stuff. You yeah. know, the pulling the permits to the IT, building the website, hiring people to do this, that. You know, sending out gear when people order. I'm just the face. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, right. I I literally go out and I do. I, I tell them, hey, this is the angle that we need. This is the story that we're capturing. I love it. Like, yeah. So we do our part, and yeah. I think that goes without saying in, in, in everything that you do, like mm-hmm. you were asking me, how do I juggle this schedule? Well, because I have a trustworthy uh, 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 members and yeah. our, in our school. Yeah. So I can trust them while I'm out of town to know that the quality that our students expect is there every single Beautiful. time, whether I'm there or not. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. my name may be on the door, but it's not just me. Yeah, it's a team. Yeah, it's a team of guys it. that are doing their part. Yeah. Whether it's our children's instructor, whether it's our adult instructor, whether it's our front desk, whether it's our manager, it's everybody does their own part. So yeah. that's what gives me the freedom to be able to, you know, move my schedule around and still be, you know, who I am, you know, still be the father that I need to be, you know, yeah. like I usually try to spend at least two or three days. I mean, I'm eating lunch with my son. We're going to soccer practice. I'm taking him to jujitsu, like, you know. Yeah. Which is the important things in life. Of course, of course. Yeah, man. Um, hey, I want to rewind a little bit because, um, you know, when, every, when, when we look at you, or at least when I look at you, and I, I've known you for a, for a few years now, I see the, you know, success that Kenny Kim has become, right? What Matt Maid has done for you, what your, what your business has done for you. I, I met your family. You know, right. you know yep, it's, it's just an awesome thing that you've built for yourself. I want to talk about some failures. Mm-hmm. I want because you've been an entrepreneur most of your life, all my life, all your life. So um, I want people to look at you and, and and understand that this is the long game you've been playing. Sure, right? You've been playing the long game. So talk a little bit about it. The Kenny is an overnight success that <laughs> took twenty five years. Twenty five years to do. <laughs> it only took twenty five years yeah, to come overnight. Overnight yeah. success. So I want people to see that because um, I want people to understand that. You know, I, I know you're you're a humble dude, man, and you always say like, if I can do it, anybody can. But I want them to understand that there were some bumps in the road. Sure, I, I read your book, uh, excellent. Yeah, it was a great book. Um, but you were a young entrepreneur, and let's talk about being a young entrepreneur, and not really understanding what the long game is all about. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, listen. So in the beginning, I at least had a dream. I yeah. at least said, you know what, I want to be an entrepreneur. Yeah, I want to be a school owner. I want to be, you know what I mean? I, yeah, I, I knew I couldn't do the nine to five job. Yeah. Well, first I couldn't, you know why I couldn't? Uh, because I, I couldn't get the job. I wasn't qualified to get a <laughs> nine to five job. Think of it. No, seriously. When people say, oh, I couldn't get the job. They're like, oh, yeah. no, I'm like, I literally couldn't. I didn't have the skill level or the education to do any. Yeah. 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 Nine to five job. Yeah. I couldn't work at a bank. They wouldn't hire me. Right. Yeah. I even tried working at a car dealership and they were like, do you have any records? I'm like, yeah. I mean, it's not a felony, but it's right. a misdemeanor when I was young. Uh, wow. Okay. So those things were being thrown out the door already. Yeah. So I couldn't get a job <laughs> doing that. So I had to do something on my own. Yeah. And that's been, you know, the, 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 the dream, all, you know, the biggest dream that I had ever since I was a kid was to become an entrepreneur. Yeah. And of course my dad tried, but he failed miserably. He, he was just such a nice guy. He, he would just give things away. Oh uh, like, yeah. Yeah. He, he couldn't make money. I mean, literally right. like, so you know, we barely paid bills. I mean, like, wow. you know, I, as a kid, I mean, it's, it's in my book. As a kid, I, I didn't get a new pair of shoes, Nikes, until I was old enough to pay for it. Wow. You know? Yeah. Like, so childhood, it was like that. But, you know, as I got into adulthood, my work ethic was always there. Yeah. But I always had doubts to myself. I'm like, ah, I don't know. And I would get bored of things easily. Yeah. Like, I get into something, and I'm like, and then I'm like, I don't know if I want to do this. Yeah. You know? But I knew what I really wanted to do was, you know, own my own business, become my own school. Yeah. So I had a big master plan. Like, this is what I'm going to do. And I, I, I was 18 when I set this plan. Wow. Okay. I had just gotten back from California. I went, went out there to go to school. Didn't go to school. St- ended up training and was teaching part-time. Yeah. And uh, learned a lot of business while I was doing that. Great. Yeah. Which helped me, I think, even till this day because a lot of, a lot of guys jump in 
not knowing the business, just yeah. having the love for a sport and then trying to do it. And that, yeah, did you have a mentor along the way that helped you? No, you're just kind of figuring out as you go. I, yeah, I was just That's looking, lumps, I was just looking over my shoulder like, oh, <laughs> that may work. Yeah. So I had a plan. I said, okay. <clears throat> and I think at the time, um, I was like, I need to save up twenty thousand dollars. Mm. And this is nineteen ninety seven. Wow. So, anyways, by n- end of nineteen ninety eight, I had enough money saved up. Wow. Twenty thousand dollars. That's awesome, man. I was working twelve hour a day construction. I mean, like whatever you could do, yeah, whatever yeah. I could do. Yeah. You know? So I saved that money up, and I had this plan. I within six months, I'm going to have this number of amount of students. I'm going to have this much money coming in. Da, 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 da. I had all this figured out. But of course, that's just a plan. Yeah. Um, there's no action. Like I, 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 I don't know what to do. Yeah. And so I had the plan set, but like, how does the plan work? Like, you <laughs> right, gotta go right. out and get it. You, you yeah. don't know what to do. Yeah, like, like me, you're an idea guy. Yeah, yeah, I, I like it's it. It's always there. Yeah. So that happens, and of course, I, I don't have a car, I don't have any money, but I have pride. Yeah. So my parents are like, oh, you know, we can maybe try to help you. I'm like, nope, I'm good. Like, wow. I don't need nobody's help. Good for you. So I actually slept in the school with no heat. I mean, I was, I mean, I was freezing. Yeah. Eating one meal a day. Wow. It was a dollar for a bowl of rice next door. That's all I had for like for, for, for six weeks. Wow. And I cried probably every night. I, I sat <laughs> right. in the corner yeah. and cried. Like, what did yeah. I get myself into? Yeah. But I said, I'm going to make it. Yeah. And then fortunately, I had some very, very you know loyal family that supported me. Like, because they saw me like a son. Yeah. And they literally came in, brought other, other families. And nice. we literally became a little family. And. You know, f- probably the f- first five, six, seven years, man, they took care of me. They brought me to their home. I ate, showered there. They took me out. They, I mean, it like they brought me blankets. I mean, it was like they were. They took me like care camp. T- took care of me like I was their kid. That's awesome, man. Um, I mean, that's one of the failures. And then you start making a little bit of money. Like I say, a little bit of min- money, meaning like I never made any money. So as soon as you have some, I'm like, oh my god, it's almost like on a smaller scale. Like an athlete making his first million and then going out blowing it. Right. Yep. Yeah. So, man, I must have been a few thousand bucks if that. You know, I'm like, oh my god, I'm buying these nice clothes. I'm going out spending money on this and blowing it on this. I'm going to strip clubs. I'm right. doing all this. <laughs> right. Next thing you know, I'm like, I'm sixty thousand dollars in debt. Wow. Twenty two years old. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. And. Whatever I signed, I mean, whatever credit cards I was using, it was like 22% APR and whatever it was. I'm like, I'm paying bare minimum and the interest is just going up. Going up, yeah. It's going up. And I'm like, all right, I got to do something. And so that was another uh, failure that I had. I mean, I I didn't know how to manage money. Wow. Yeah. You know, and uh, that took probably about 10 years for me to pay off. Yeah. Literally, I think it took me... Up until I was probably in my mid thirties, <coughs> to get out from under, yep. yeah. And then I actually started to see like light. Cool man, yeah. You know, yeah. up until that point, it was just every day was just a hustle. Wow. Yeah. 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 So, uh, and, and and with that lesson, I mean, today, I mean, obviously, you're 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 doing well. Um, and do you do you mentor like I mean, because I'm bringing this up because. When uh, Chris and I were first opening our academy, mm-hmm. you were very generous, you know, with your time and everything, you know, letting us know, hey, make sure you do this, make sure you mm-hmm. do that. And we're, we're starting to implement a lot of the things that you've been suggesting, suggesting. It's, that's why I want, I want people to understand, like, you know, like you said, it took you 25 years to be an overnight success. So, you know, I want, I want people to know that you're playing the long game and it's paying off. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and is that the advice you would give somebody like just starting out? Like, hey, be patient, you know, play the long sure. game. Yeah. But also they should be getting into whatever they're getting into because it's something that they really want to get into. Yeah. Like they have the passion for or the yeah. love for it, not just because they're looking at money. Right. I didn't get into martial arts to make money. Right. I yeah. did it because it was what I loved. Yeah. And I wanted to do something that I love to make a living off of. Yeah. And then make a living well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And so that's the steps that they got to follow. Yeah. So if you're just looking at like an overnight gimmick, like, oh, I want to make money by just doing this. Yeah, it's probably not going to pay off. It, no. Yeah. I mean, look, maybe maybe you're a tech guy and say, okay, I can sell this stuff on Amazon. You're good with like, you know, finding deals and then yeah. reposting and doing this. 
by all means, go ahead. Dude, but, you can make a killing. Right. Doing it. Yeah. But you have the passion and the love to do that. Right. Like, if you tell me you can make a million dollars, Kenny, you can do this, I still couldn't do it. Right. I don't have the passion <laughs> to sit in front of a camera, I mean, a, a, a computer, finding deals and reposting this and do, do I, it. I couldn't do that. Yeah. I couldn't do it. I Listen, I've got a garage full of shit I, I should probably sell. I just haven't touched it. Garage sale. There you go. Garage sale. <laughs> garage sale. Yeah, man. But, um, so let's talk a little bit about your uh, jiu-jitsu. How did you come around uh, around and find jiu-jitsu? Um, and was that your first art, first martial no, art that you did? No, it wasn't. Okay. okay. I think I could break it. Yeah, of course, of course. Yep. Yeah, Chorizo's coming up. <laughs> uh, we got one right across yeah. the way. Yep. So we were talking a little bit about uh, how you found jiu-jitsu. Uh, funny story. I had a roommate, Okay. So my roommate trained, he actually had a karate school in Alabama. Okay. He used to be here, moved to Alabama, long story. He started training with this guy. His name was Hodger too. We used to call him the Brazilian Mike Tyson. He was probably (laughs) 20 years old at the time, uh, brown belt world champion. Wow. From Brazil. Like this guy looked, I mean, he he looked like Mike Tyson, like a little (laughs) version of Mike Tyson. Anyways, he trained with him. But anyway, he, he, so he, part time, he started living with me. My, my roommate. Not, yeah. Not, not, not the Brazilian Mike Tyson. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> and he was training here in Atlanta and he would come home every night and hang his dirty gi, stinky gi on my, it's my furniture. Right. Yeah. He'll hang, he'll hang it on the um, dining room table. Yeah. Or the chair. I'm like, get that stinky thing out of here. He's like, oh, I don't want to dry <laughs> it. You know? Like, and he's been in the martial arts all his life too. Yeah. I think he was just like, a brown, I mean, a uh, blue belt at the time. Yeah. So you got to do this thing called Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I'm like, no, no. I was probably 20 years old at the time. Okay. 21, okay. maybe. Because yeah. that's when I got into it. 21, maybe. Yeah. Um, but, anyways, he kept on begging me, like, you got to go try this. I'm like, no, man, I can handle myself. And, yeah. Because you know, by then, like, going back, I, I did Taekwondo and then I did yep. uh, Muay Thai and, mm. you know, so. Uh, so one day I end up going with them. I'm like, let me go. I think I talk about this in my book too, but I go and I see like 30 guys rolling around. I'm like, uh, you know, nothing impressive. You know, yeah. I've seen Hoist Crazy before and I was like, ah, that's a fluke anyway. Right. <laughs> guy got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so anyways, I get dressed and I go into class, man, and I get freaking smashed yeah. all over the place. And I mean, and I did good, you know, because yeah. I was young, I was athletic. athletic and yeah. I'm, I mean, I have, you know, common sense and pride whatnot. yeah <laughs> but i still got smashed so yeah funny story is right after that uh my instructor brought me into his office and i got signed up i registered for class so you know how long i registered for it? at the time it was called a purple belt program okay seven years I, I signed a contract for seven years holy crap wow so i went all in first day <laughs> <laughs> first day first day oh wow yeah. man yeah seven year contract mm-hmm. All right. So are you serious? I was like, yeah. He's like, this is what you have. I said, all right, let's do it. Wow. And that's the instructor I started with and got my black belt. Good and I still, I still keep in touch with him. We probably talk on a weekly basis. No kidding. Yeah, okay. We talk all the time. Wow. We go out to eat lunch and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I have a very good relationship. No kidding. Yeah. So, so you sign it now, is he still in the same spot or has he like moved on or is he still training or? Yeah, he's still doing the same thing. I mean, he moved to a bigger, he's got his own building. He's got a bigger nice. space. He's a little bit older, so he doesn't roll anymore. Yeah. I mean, you really yeah. can't, you know? Yeah. And he's been not only in jujitsu, he's done Muay Thai, boxing and Wing Chun. And he's yeah. been doing martial arts all his life too, you know? So yeah. your body gets kind of. Yeah. Broken down a little bit, you know? Well, I mean, back in the day when you started, it was like, you know, you walk in and a new guy. And there's a sh- room full of sharks ready to kill you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's That's, a strong survive, right? So, so at the time, I, I, I remember talking to someone not that long ago about this. It wasn't well organized mm. as it is now. Yeah. Which is a good thing. Yeah. But back then, we had our own, like I don't know, set of rules, I guess. Yeah, it was a code. Yeah. So yeah. You, you, like, that was the test. Yeah. Either you came in, you were ready to train, or you just walked away. It's like you saw a ghost and you're going to acknowledge it, <laughs> or you're going to say, no, you know, I'm scared of it. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, you just had a bunch of sharks waiting, and, man, you come in, you were going to get your ass kicked. Yeah, yeah. And either you're going to say, you know, bite your lip and be like, okay, I'm ready to learn this, make myself humble, or you're yeah. going to just walk out and, like, this isn't for me. Yeah, how many, how, many, how many schools do you think were in the Atlanta area at the time? Couldn't have been that many. 
we had maybe a handful of them, but two major ones, which was where I was. Yeah. And then where uh, Jacare uh, Alliance was. Oh, yeah. That's okay. where the headquarters is, even Atlanta right now. Gotcha. gotcha. So those are the two. So almost everybody, if you train in Atlanta back then, even till now, they, like you split from those two. It was like a route. Wow. Those two. And we used to always compete against each other. Like yeah. those are the two main schools there. Yeah. So the the majority of today's lineage probably still comes from those two, right? Yeah, in yeah, that yeah. area. Wow. In that area. Yeah. Yeah. Unless they came from somebody else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. From, I mean, which know. we have, you know. Hundreds of schools yeah. now. Gracie Baja you know. is out there and yeah. everybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But if originally from Georgia, it was those two right there. Wow. It's kind of like our relationship. We were talking about this uh, last week on the podcast. Um, our re- relationship with uh, Gustavo Dantes and uh, Megaton. Like a lot of the lineage locally comes from those two guys, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, unless you mm-hmm. came in from somewhere else, obviously, right? right? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. yeah, that's it's funny how that works, right? There's always like, oh, it seems like there's always like two guys yep. in a market that kind of dominate for they a while. They basically and, plant their seeds and yeah. then, you know, it kind of spreads from there. Yeah. And now Atlanta is just, I know Arizona too, but Atlanta is just, I mean, they got some incredible people, like yeah. big name guys, yeah. and UFC fighters to world champions. To, I mean, like it's... You know, I I think I've kind of gotten lucky that I made a place uh, yeah. in a city like that. You know, yeah, and um, I think I think the market that you're in is is really nice. I mean, I was really amazed how big a uh, Brazilian uh, community you have in your area. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Talk about that a little bit. Nobody Tell me about knows, the influence on that. From what I hear, it's if it's not the biggest, it's like the one of the biggest. Brazilian communities in the United States, wow. even more so than like Miami yeah. or even Boston. Supposedly Boston has a big one too. Okay. Okay. But it's, I mean, especially where I live in Marietta, yep. it's concentrated Brazilians. It's restaurants, to yep. grocery stores, bakeries, to, bakeries, yeah. to barbershops, to coffee shops. Yeah. My, yeah. Um, um, the lady who cleans my house, she's Brazilian. You yeah. got guys who do flooring construction, all Brazilian, all Brazilian. Now you go somewhere, it's like, now that you know, like, only thing I hear is Portuguese. Yeah. It's not even as bad as, like, Portuguese. Wild, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, crazy. it's crazy. Yeah, so when we went out there, we ate at that, what was that all-you-can-eat Brazilian steakhouse? Yeah, Real de Janeiro, yeah. yeah. so yeah. freaking oh, good, yeah. dude. It's basically Fogo de Chão. Not the best quality like Fogo, but, like, third of the price of Fogo. Yeah. Which I, I'll do that any all day. Dude, <laughs> when, when, when I got the bill, it was, like, 22 bucks. I'm like, okay, get out of here. Pay it quick. Yeah, Somebody yeah, screwed yeah. up. <laughs> it's not 85 bucks? <laughs> yeah, dude, it was so good. And then um, we had coffee at that bakery. I can't yep. remember the name of the bakery, but it was so good. And they, you know, they, they, they were all speaking Portuguese. Yep. And I was like, and you're like, yeah, it's, <laughs> that's, that's the way it is. why all the guys love, the, you know, of course, all our guys, they love to come visit me because we go there. I mean, it's just like home to them. They're, they're going to the grocery store, picking up groceries and taking it home with them. Wow. Yeah, man. That's that's awesome. That's 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 so much fun to, to get out there and see that. And it, it wasn't what I expected at all. I expect Georgia to be, I don't know, Georgia, this is south, right? right? But it's very diverse. We got everything. Yeah. I yeah. mean, like, you want your shrimp and grits, you got that. Yeah. You want tacos, you got that. Yeah. You got your Korean barbecue. I mean, anything and everything diverse you want. We have it. Yeah, for sure, man. It's a fun town. It is. It's it's definitely, I, I grew up there. I mean, I mean, it's, yeah, it's my town. I, I, I can't leave. Yeah. So, hey, I want to ask you about that. So, um, so you're of Korean descent. Are, mm-hmm. you're, are you first generation U.S. or are your parents first generation? My parents. Your parents? Yeah. yeah so your parents lived... Did they did they live in the in the uh, Atlanta area? They're, they're yeah. Yeah, pretty much their yeah, yeah their whole time yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah. cool man. Yeah. So we've been there all the yeah that's that's our home. That's home. That's yeah, cool that's man. That's home. That's yeah. home. That's wild. So um so let's uh, let's okay so you go through your seven years purple belt program. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I may well maybe no I don't think I yeah I barely got to purple belt purple at seven. Years. Okay so I let's, was blue belt for five years. Wow how really. Either I suck that bad, or <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, my 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 professor wanted to hold me back. Yeah, you know, sometimes you got guy that's guys that are like coming up, they're good. Of course, they just yeah. Want, oh, oh, yeah. Let's hold you back. Let's hold you back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but out of the five years, I think like six months to eight months, uh, I was having some trouble. Um, yeah. So I didn't make it in as much. You gotcha. Know what I mean? yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. So either way, like five years. Yeah, and th- and that's back when you know like you're very organized and your, your academy is very organized and, 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 and mine is too. Like we track every single sure. attendance, every single, mm-hmm. everything. And, uh, but back then it was like, if your instructor thinks you're ready, okay, you're ready. Yeah. Right. It wasn't it was, like, you know, the crazy thing is like, you know, we have belt promotions now, mm-hmm. you know, cause we, we follow more of the, the traditional martial arts, yeah. um, footsteps. Yep. What's we need to. And that's all we know. Right. 
Yeah. yeah. We need to though. That's in order for our, our, our industry to grow. Yeah. The Brazilian Jiu Jitsu community needed to follow that because without that organization, it, it was never going to be where it is now. A hundred percent. You yes. know what I mean? So that's why I still have this kind of like mixed feeling about what it used to be and what it is yeah. now. Yeah. Obviously what it is now is amazing. You know, we have uh, different ways to track students to different ways that, you know, students can pay yeah. different ways we can promote them on, whether it's, uh, you know, you know, a competitor yep. or, or, you know, not, you know, hobbyist, yep. whatever they may be, you know, we have different ways of going about things. Yeah. Back then there wasn't. Yeah. I remember the first, like when I signed up, he said, take this white belt to a, um, a tailor over here get a piece of black bar i'm like what do i need a piece <laughs> right. of black bar like it was that long yeah. ago they didn't sell jujitsu belts yeah literally yeah. unless you were in like brazil right yeah and it, we had all judo geese yes well and someone told me that back in the day like you know we're talking like early 90s if you had the guts to wear like a blue gi or a black gi that was kind of a big deal uh, right because it was all traditionally white no, no you don't want we, we didn't <laughs> <laughs> my my professor, their school, they still don't wear color geese. Just white geese. Yeah, just white geese. Yeah. yeah. I wore a blue gee when I was, uh, I think when I first got promoted to black belt. Oh, really? And he was like, you got to be the one to wear this. <laughs> he was like, you're going to get a special treatment today. Uh, <laughs> and I think he choked me like five times. <laughs> yeah, man. When did you get your black belt? What year was that? It's been, what, 11 years now? So 13, somewhere on there? 12, no. 13? 11 maybe 11 okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay Somewhere cool around there so yeah 13 i don't, I don't remember this. yeah <laughs> I yeah i stopped counting yeah well back then i mean okay so uh samir and i samir was on the podcast and samir was telling me about like uh jujitsu years like 10 jujitsu years might as well be a thousand yeah. because there's so much there's a big difference between now and 10 years ago oh, and, yeah. and you know 10 years ago honestly like when i started out i was at paul nava school and he had a very young school, which meant like the higher belts were like two striped blue belts. Uh -huh, uh -huh. If you had a purple belt come in, you know, he was visiting from another school. Mm -hmm. If you had two black belts on the mat and they were rolling together, nobody else rolled. Mm -hmm. We want to watch, watch this shit. <laughs> we're going to watch this. So it's very, I mean, I can only imagine that was, that was about 10 years ago, yeah. but I can imagine, you know, 11, 12, I mean, 13, 15 years ago when you were like blue belt, purple belt, whatever you were, um, it had to be an anomaly having yep. black belts in the academy, right? So seeing a purple belt was like this amazing experience. Like, oh my God, this guy's a purple belt. So yeah. one of the assistant instructors at our school was a purple belt. Yeah. And he was phenomenal. Like, oh my God, yeah, this guy man. is badass. Yeah. And then seeing a brown belt was just like a unicorn. Yeah. And a black belt was just like this mist of a you know what you know god just coming out just of the smoke float across yeah, the exactly. room yeah. like, and he can just like look at you and be one of those big dojos and like tap yeah. you with it you know yeah. like it, it was because it was just and then when you had somebody come do a seminar it was like we would pack the house two yeah. three hundred people because yeah. where else are you gonna get it right yeah you have that i yeah. mean that's the days when vhs tapes were being you know handed off yeah yeah, you and know? the uh, magazines, yeah. right? You were learning through magazines, like yeah. Grappler's Quest videos and yeah. all these, like, well, they don't even exist anymore, right. you know? But those are the things that we used to pass around and be like, did you see that? And then, of course, you go to your local Nagas and, you know, uh, Arnold Classics, and that's when you see some of these, like, high-level guys come in and everybody's just, like, crowded around the mat and just yeah. quiet watching these yeah. matches. Yeah, yeah man, man. it was... It's a, it was a big, it, it, to, and it, to me, it's still a big deal because it's not lost on me, you know what I mean? But back then, it had to be... Huge. It had to be a huge oh, yeah. deal. It's like, you know, when you're when you're there for the infancy of anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whether it's a company, whether it's a sport, whatever it may be, when you're there for the infancy and you see the growth, I mean, it, you really appreciate it a lot more than you yeah. would, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And, and for me, it's been like, you know, I've been competing since I was a white belt. I love it. I'm old, I know, but I still love doing it. I, I'm, I'm in love with the process of preparing. Mm -hmm. And, um... When I first started competing in the master's division, which was all I've known, it was like five, six people in your division. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? You're probably going to podium. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And uh, and then, you know, I got my purple belt and I was like 15. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I get my brown belt. Oh, we got 25. Now there's like 40 people in my division. So even at, at black belt, I'm, I remember at master's, master one, I believe I was. It's been a while. Yeah. But yeah. 
We would literally have like the same two, three guys. <laughs> right. <laughs> you again? Let's just yeah. like, okay, let's see who's going to win this time. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. it's almost like rolling with your, you know, classmate because yeah. you kind of know each other's yeah. game. And so whoever was on that day would win, you know? Yeah. Then we'll have another guy come in. We'll be looking at him like, like who the hell is this yeah, guy? Who's yeah. this guy? <laughs> Going to the entire division. All right, well, let's get him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like it's we teamed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we like teamed up on him. And then they become our good friends, you know what yeah. I mean? And we see yeah. each other like all over. Yeah. Then I remember even worlds we would have. Uh, 15 18 yeah that was a lot that's a lot yeah that's a big that's division a back then back division then. Yeah. we're like man so your regular opens you would have three to five if that yeah i was lucky yeah like uh, that was a big one that was a big one yeah yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. it was like two or three a lot of times it was just you and another guy yeah and then you know the funny thing in the bullpen is like one big bullshit session yeah. you're all laughing and yeah, joking yeah. and shit yeah yeah but man like obviously last year i, I didn't compete because i had my knee surgery or this yeah. year <laughs> I think the division I was supposed to be in, the crazy thing is this. First of all, it was like 60 somewhat people. Yeah. Yeah. And out of that, <laughs> Vitoy Shaolin, who won, oh was in my, my division. God. I'm like, how do you, this guy can probably still compete at the adult level and could. win. Yeah, probably could. I mean, you had pull guy, you had like five adult world champions that are competing in my division right yeah. now. Yeah. And that's how, like, because before, People didn't recognize Master Worlds as like a, a thing. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> they just said, oh, it's old man world. It's really not a. Yeah, it's not now a, yeah. it's become so prestigious. Yeah, it really because, is. Because, <clears throat> I mean, I don't know. To me, 30 years old, ah, oh, man, it's still kind of young. Dude, you're still in your athletic prime at oh, 30. I, I, was, I don't think I was in my athletic prime until I was in my mid 30s. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think it's gotten to a point where people know that it's actually really prestigious. Yeah. It's probably more prestigious than adult worlds. I mean, I say that out of respect to all the adult worlds, but I'm saying is like adult worlds, you have <coughs> a handful of guys, you know, like, yep. And they basically pick the, pick the, uh, uh, the brackets, the top echelon. Yeah. yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Man, you may have one guy. And I remember somebody saying, oh, I don't know this Vitor guy. They didn't, it doesn't say Shaolin. It's just. Right. It was like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to beat him. I'm like, okay, buddy. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> good luck. You know? Yeah. I'll tell you a funny story about <coughs> being, um, you know, I don't really look at my, my bracket like beforehand. Um, I look at the, the time, the mat, and I'm ready to go. I just pretend it's going to be the toughest people in the world. Yep. You know, I'm going to have a hundred matches and that's how I train. I took a peek this time, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> and I had to get to the quarterfinals to fight um, uh, Jose Carlos out of, out of Norway, and I just smiled because I have a photo of me at Jose Carlos seminar as uh -huh. a white belt uh -huh. and blue belt, and now I'm in his division. Like I would YouTube this guy mm -hmm. because of his deep half game, yeah. insane, right? And there's other people also, you know, like I'm shaking hands with the guys. Like, do yeah. you realize who you are? You know what I mean? But that's the masters division. Sure, that's the masters division. And 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 uh, Jose Carlos, he trains with uh, Espen Matson, who's a young kid. Uh -huh, I uh -huh. mean, and he's tough, dude. Like, yeah. man, man, crafty, crafty as hell. But yeah, like you said, man, it's more than just old man jujitsu, right? And I think, and I, and I respect everybody that goes out there and competes. Yeah. Because for most of us, one match, you're done. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And some people can go up to the podium. Some people can make it all the way up. But yeah. again, like you said, I think it's more about the, the preparation. For yes. us, it's, <clears throat> most of us aren't trying, well, I know. We're not making a career out of <coughs> competing in the master's division. Correct. Yeah. This is for us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is for ourselves on our daily lives. Yeah. Getting my, you know, diet in order. Yeah. Getting me into the best physical shape. Getting me mentally fit. Like these are the 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 I guess the the positive side effects of getting ready for a yeah. I, I seriously don't give a rat's ass about winning or losing. I, I yeah. wanna win. Of course. Yes. Of course. All, yeah. all of us want to win. We all want to win, yeah. But the experience of me spending time on the mats with my guys, with me, my mind, pushing my body, yeah. you know, having a goal to attain, yeah, that is huge. Yeah. Because that's all we do, even in business. If you don't have that, like we were talking about business earlier, most people jump into something without having a goal or a plan and they yeah. just kind of wing it. It's not going to work. No, it's not. It's not. And <clears throat> even if you have a vague idea, I want you, I, I want you to have the vague idea for five years from now. Right. So if you start, if you start a project today, 
you, you, you may not know what tomorrow may bring, but I, I always tell people, I want you to have an idea of what you see five years from now, right? If you still see it five years from now being a thing, okay, do it. It's worth doing right now. I want you to look at yourself. I, I don't, I don't picture myself on the podium. I don't like when I visualize, I visualize the after party. Yeah. Like, what am I wearing? Who am I with? You know what I mean? Like, where are we hanging out? Like, I visualize that stuff. I go beyond just that mm -hmm, little mm -hmm. singular goal, right? right? But without that process, you'll never experience that that outcome, right? right. And the outcome is the after party. Win or lose, yeah. right? You, you can still... I've never regretted a single day of training. You know what I mean? I've always regretted the, the, the training that I've skipped. Right. There's a big difference. Sure. Right? Yeah, and that's that's what I love about yeah. pr the preparation of it. Yeah, I love it, man. I'm 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 addicted to it. I think most of us are. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, at a certain point though, it gets kind of it gets me down like, you know, uh, earlier this year I had uh, a full ACL, you know, replacement. Yeah. So yeah. when you're out and can't do the things that you're used to doing, and mentally it it you know, you know, messes with your it hurts. Yes. Yeah. Uh <clears throat> As I said earlier, I'm just now feeling like myself again. Yeah. And then you come down with something else. You're feeling a little grump. I'm like, it's, it's always something. But you know what? That's part of it. Yeah. It yeah. And, and uh, <clears throat> I know when we were we were in uh, in uh, Nashville, you were still in your brace. Yep. And you said it was getting better. You just got it was more of a precautionary thing. But you were still doing seminars. Yeah. You know, you're still you weren't. I don't think you rolled. You may have you may have drilled a yeah, little, a little bit, bit. Yeah. But um, which but I you're, shouldn't have. But <laughs> <laughs> we won't tell your PT. Yeah, uh -uh. We won't tell your PT. But you know that's the thing about jujitsu, man. You don't want to come off the mats no matter what, and it's such a bummer. ACL is. is so ACL, in my opinion, is one of the biggest things that can it go is. wrong, right? And uh, how long did you have the ACL before you repaired it? You know, I think it was an ongoing thing. Was it okay? I think, you know, I've always, I mean, I was looking back, I've always had bad knees. I had surgery in the other one. And then on this one, 2019, March, I was in London competing at the Grand Slam. Wow. Uh, and my final match, by the way, I won. Nice. My final match, we were stuck in this like 50-50 position. We were just kind of rolling around for dominance. And I heard it pop, pop. And it, it's, it was painful. Mm. And uh, I looked at the clock. Had like 13 seconds. <laughs> wow. Wow. Was okay. that was it the final? Yeah. Final. Thank God. Okay. Thank yeah. God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 13 seconds. And, you know, I just played the position and I won, uh, which was a big international. It was like my f first international nice. one at a you know uh, Abu Dhabi Grand Slam. It was, it was yeah. amazing. It was a yeah. great experience. But the whole time I was because we were in London for another week, and then we it was just uh, my black belt students and training partners yeah and we went over to uh amsterdam for a week sweet so that was the whole thing we actually went as a vacation yeah but yeah. while we're on vacation yeah. let's compete the after party yeah see that perfect but man i struggled because man my knee was so messed up i think that was the beginning of it and then the year after that i was training and i popped it again mm. and i never go to the doctor i'm like right boom, yeah boom, boom, boom. so it happened happened and then in 2021 Oh, we were having like a wrestling clinic. It's nothing nobody else did. I was like, cool. So I was trying some moves and I actually stepped. I didn't do it. Nobody did anything to me. I stepped and it buckled and I, I closed my eyes and I thought, okay, it felt like my knee just went like it folded in half. Like you would like take oh. a cell phone, you know, how you fold the phone. That's what it felt like. Yeah. And I just said, people were like, Yo. I was like, just don't talk to me for a minute. I'm like, just leave me alone for just a second. Like, yeah. I need, I need, I think I laid on the mat for like 20 minutes and then I was like, yeah, I think it's, it's done. And wow. so, um, I called my doctor who happens to be a, a, a multiple time world champion, master world champion. I love it. He, uh, he said, well, wait for the inflammation to go down. He says, come see me in two weeks or three weeks to get, a, um, uh, to get a MRI. Yeah. And so I got the MRI and I didn't think, oh, and then by then, I was moving well. I was like, I was squatting and I was <laughs> yeah. like, Man, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. I yeah. was like, I feel pretty confident about the outcome of the uh, MRI. Yeah. He calls me. He was like, bad news. He was like, it's worse than I thought it was going to be. Like, what do you mean? He was like, well, you have a complete tear. So I, I think they call it a grade four. A complete tear of the ACL. He said, you have a uh, grade two uh, MCL and LCL tear. He's oh. like, they're still on, but it's. Yeah. You know, no surgery, but you, and then he said, uh, you have two tears in your meniscus. He said, one's a, uh, a medium meniscus tear. He said, the other one was a vertical tear. He's like, well, I don't know how to even treat that right now because it's behind your knee. So we have to maybe go in tight. He's like, well, uh, we, we got to wait till we open you up first. Wow. So I was like, surgery? He's like, 
Well, if you want to stay active and do what you do, yes. Yeah. And I said, okay. So we scheduled it, and that was, I had surgery April the 15th. Mm. And uh, by May 15th, I was, I think, already drilling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember I remember uh, you were posting videos about you in the gym, like, shortly after. I was like, man, isn't your knee messed up? You were in a, in a brace yeah, at yeah, the gym. Yeah, yeah, they put me in a full... Uh, full length uh, brace, and I think week three I was doing deadlifts. <laughs> yeah, so we're, I'm going into month seven, and I'm at a point where I think I mean I haven't yet fully trained. I mean I've been yeah. training a little bit, but yeah. not like fully. Full out, yeah. Because I still don't trust the the stability. Ag agreed. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like so, I try to play a lot more bottom. That way, I don't have to step to yep. pivot or anything yep. like that. But my cardio is gone. Like I, I, you know, this weekend during the seminar, if guys want to train, I'm going to be like, nope. <laughs> I got two minutes for Hard you. Hard pass. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm busy. Yeah. Because, <laughs> uh, man, yeah. it's just, it's so hard when you yeah. start missing. Because you miss a week, it's hard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't take long. Yeah. It doesn't take long. I yeah. Mean, I've been missing months. You yeah. Know? So um, I remember, I think last month was the first time I really trained a little bit, like not hard, but like hard. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I, I felt like I was going to die. Yeah. I felt like I was going to throw up. I haven't had that feeling. It sucks, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I didn't want to throw up. Yeah. Like, it's not like I was out of shape. It's right. just, I wasn't in the. Jiu-jitsu conditioning. Yeah. 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 And yeah. so it, it's been, you know, slowly getting better, slowly Good. getting better, but I still got a long ways to go. Yeah, man. Yeah. And you know, um, when I, 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 I've torn my LCL, I've torn my meniscus, uh, never an ACL. I mean, I've, I've been lucky. Oh, yeah. Knock on wood. I actually, there was one time, I don't know how my knee stayed intact. Um, uh, a buddy of mine, good training partner of mine had me in a, uh, a single leg and he was about to run the pipe. Well, as he was about to run the pipe, I was turning away to kind of limp the leg mm -hmm, out mm -hmm. and my, my knee went in two direct. I felt it. Oh yeah. It went in two directions and it stayed intact. I don't know how I was so lucky that day. Yeah. Uh, it may have been that my I, my my other foot must have slipped or something, mm -hmm, but I mm -hmm. fell right, and it it must have happened just in time because that would have been catastrophic. I mean, two yeah. directions, no good. You know, the speaking of injuries, you know what's funny is like you know, with um, there's a video, Instagram video that I I um, posted about three things that you didn't know about jujitsu. Yeah, I think that was the title of the video, and of course. You know, people have their opinions. This is fine. Of course. But, you know, I think one of the things I talked about was jujitsu was relatively safe. I said relatively safe compared to other sports. Yeah. And one of the things I said was, like, you don't repeatedly get punched in the face. Every <laughs> right. <laughs> that's a that's a big one for me. Oh, yeah. I don't want to get punched in the face. And so, but the crazy thing was, man, that thing got probably, you know, half a million views. And people were just commenting, Oh, me, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, I hurt my ACL the first day in class. Oh, I got my arm popped. And, you know, like to the viewers or to my fans that are posting that, guys, look at the way you're training. That's the first thing you got to look at. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know guys in their 60s that train every day and they're fine. Yeah. So you got to really look at like how you're training. If you're spazzing out, training like you're a crazy person, yeah, you're probably going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. And you can't say that it's... No sports even safe. None. Not 100%. You, you no way. You can play ping pong <laughs> and roll your ankle and 100%. break. Yeah, that's you know right. what I mean? Like that's there's right. no sport that's safe. Yeah. And again, I said relatively safe relatively compared safe. to other combat sports. Yeah. And again, I don't, I'm not going to go deep into explaining this to you. Right. It's just, yeah. It's my channel. I what I want. And, <laughs> but but, and, but uh, it's accurate. What you're saying is accurate. You know, yeah. it's relatively safe compared to other combat sports. Yeah. That's why so many people can do it. Yeah. Even compared to wrestling. Like, how many people do you know over 30 years old that wrestle on a daily basis? Zero. How many people over 35, 40 years old do you know that train judo daily? Zero. No. Yeah. You can't. Zero. You can't. My it's, body wouldn't hold up. You couldn't. Yeah. I know people who've tried it. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. It's just too hard on your body. Yeah. Yeah. Even boxing, even Muay Thai. How many yeah. people do you see that? Dude, I mean, can you imagine at at, at, at 50 years old getting punched in the head yes. like every day? No, no, it's just not going to happen. You can't. Yeah. But yeah. in jiu-jitsu, we can still train hard. Yep. 100%. Yep. <clears throat> you, you could train every day if you really yeah. wanted to. Yeah. And yeah. relatively stay safe. Yep. Yep. You know and what I mean? I've trained through injuries. Sure. I've trained jujitsu through. In, I mean, you were you were drilling a week out a yeah. week out of surgery yeah. because there was ways to do it where yeah. you can take care of your partner. Yeah. And actually, um, 
uh, my friend Tojo, um, he was on the podcast, uh, Alex Cray, good friend of mine, Black oh, Belt. Yeah. Um, he was talking about training with people who have injuries. Mm -hmm. And it, he said, if your jujitsu IQ is high enough, you can train with somebody with an injury and have a good training session. Sure. Yeah. So, no, I mean, you can train with anybody. Yeah. I can train with my six year old son, five year old son. Yeah. Still get good training because there's things that we can still work on. Yeah. There's things that you can do. You can, there's things that you can go around about doing it. Yeah. 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 It's, it's how you train. It's you. It's you. At the end of the day, it's you. Yeah. And, you know, um, when I, when I was starting out, I was a spazzy white belt like everybody else trying to win. I don't know what the hell I was trying to win. Well, everybody does. <laughs> I mean, come on. Come on. Yeah. Still, even at Black Belt, we still try to win. We still try to win. Yeah, let's not, let's not. <laughs> Not, let's not, let's not get it twisted. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know, uh, trying to win and not knowing what you're doing is a is a recipe for sure. for yeah for destroy you know whatever. But um, so I remember hearing like the higher belts, and that and that day it was like purple, you know, blue and purple. Mm -hmm. But they were telling me like no one wants to train with a spazzy white belt, and like if you're at an open mat and people are like looking around around at, you know around <laughs> you, it's because you're a spazzy white you're belt. You're the guy. So. I made it a point, man. I wanted to be a person that they wanted to train with. So what first thing I started doing was sitting on my butt. That's the first thing I started doing. And, you know, a higher belt's like, okay, this guy's not going to elbow you me in the face. that dirty I mean, guard puller. <laughs> dirty, dirty guard puller. <laughs> but I sat on my butt instead of standing up because mm -hmm. no one wants to take a head butt. No one wants to take an elbow. And then the first time I realized I was making progress is one of the black belts in the academy was like, okay, come on over. Like, really? Okay, cool. You know, that must mean I'm making some progress, right? But, you know, what's odd is that... In my days, when I was a white belt, I don't really, I vaguely remember. Yeah. But it was the opposite way. The upper belts came to us. Yeah. Because they wanted to beat the shit out of us. <laughs> I'm serious. I don't think I, I get, like, every, yeah. sometimes I would have to literally, like, like turn my head and be like, act like I didn't see this guy. <laughs> like a high, like a three-stripe blue belt. Yeah. And three-stripe blue belt back then was just yeah. this. Like, he's had three MMA fights under his belt. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this guy's the yeah. toughest could be. Yeah. Be like, let's roll. Yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> no about that. Like you, yeah. you're literally, you can't be spazzy because they don't give you time to be spazzy. Right. They yeah. literally they just like, beat the crap out of you. That's the way it was. That's yeah. why I said it was <clears throat> some things that I miss about the old days. Yeah. Like even now, if we wanted to, we could take that spazzy white belt. Yeah. And just put him on his back. And not give them an inch to work to be spazzy. Agreed. Agreed. Yes. But we don't. We allow them to, to work. work. Yeah. And that's why they can be spazzy. Yeah. Yeah. You see what I mean? That's a very good point. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. again, it was the exact opposite thing. Now <laughs> that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, I don't know. I, was, I, I mean, I guess I was a spazzy white belt, but I remember because I was getting my ass kicked. <laughs> every, every session, I was just getting my ass kicked. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. ever wonder why you came back? I'm like, why did I come back the next day? I'm just getting know. the shit kicked out of me. That's, that's I guess, one common thing that we have, jujitsu guys have, is like, I don't just like that. We just keep coming back. Yeah, yeah. There's no reason for it. That's I think that's healthy ego. Like yeah. your ego gets you back, right? So yeah, that's yeah. kind of healthy ego. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We all need that. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. But hey, listen. Um, I want to I want to get back for a second. I want to get back to the Matt Made show. Uh, before we close out today. Yeah. So, um, you and I were talking about the the future of Matt Made, and we were talking about um how you're gonna you're gonna change things up, and you're gonna bring people. I don't know if this is something you want to talk about. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, bring people to Atlanta to come see you. How right. is that? How is that going to work? Like, how how do you go about that? So right now, you know, we're filming in other locations, cities. Yeah, you know, we're still going to do that. Yeah, and the process is. So I'm going to explain the process. Uh, as I explained just briefly earlier, people can now go to our website, mattmade.com, yep. and upload their own stories. Yeah. Okay, their own version, the short stories they can record at the comfort of their home, upload it, our team, you know, they'll chop it up. Very cool. But once those videos go up, the process is this. Once it goes up and we see how the viewers are acting, reacting to mm. all of our videos. Mm. So, you know, Susie Sue over here posts a video about her story. And that, let's say this thing gets like 2.5 million views. That means that people really resonate with her There's story. There's interest. Yeah. So she's probably going to be on one of the main episodes. I love it. Yeah. So we're like, we're taking the books. Like before we were randomly picking like this person will be probably a good story to yep. do it on. And it, I mean, well, it's our company. It's what we do. So I can't say it's not fair. I mean, we do what we do. Yeah. But 
to make this open to everybody, once we start having these submissions of stories, we can pick out the best one of each, um, um, how should I say it, um, each side, I guess. I mean, one for, you know, uh, health and fitness. Yeah, like a category. Woman. Right. Each category. Yeah, each yeah. category. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> and so that's what we opened that up. And so we're still going to go do the, um, our regular episodes throughout the year. Mm-hmm. But what I'm planning on, where we're actually going to have a meeting um, coming up here in a few weeks. Hopefully that it goes well. We want to start inviting some of those people to Atlanta. One a month, I want to do a an episode, but like more like a vlog style. So not like yeah. a full out production, but we'll still have our team there. Yeah. And so what they'll do is they'll fly in. They'll spend the day with me. Um, we'll train together. We'll have a mat chat, talk about, you know, their story. And then I'll basically take them to my favorite restaurant, my favorite place to hang out, show them around my town. Yeah. And so it's exactly the same concept that, but, but we're bringing people in because what's important is the story. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Not only the food, not only the fun, but the story is what's important. Yeah. So we want to give more of that. Yeah. You know? So hopefully we can have, you know, 12 stories on Joe Stowe's yeah. short episodes, and then we'll have full-length episodes, you know, that that's going to be out too. And I, all, all the short stories. Yeah. I, I love that idea. I love the idea because, you know, when you're going on location, right, you went to Nashville and you went to, you know, other spots. But you go on location and someone is like, okay, Kenny's coming to hear my story. Okay, cool. But think of the mindset shift when that when somebody says, hey, I'm flying out to go see Kenny to, to tell my story, yeah. mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I think you're going to get a lot more genuine, open conversation right. because right. they're going to be they're going to feel like I'm in a safe place and no one's here watching. Right. Right. right? I'm not. And, I'm a- and the production value is going to be less because and our people just don't understand how, like how big our production is. Yeah. We show up, they're like, Oh my God, what is all this? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and people kind of shy away from the camera. Like yeah. it's, it's hard, but like, imagine like you're just training and you have somebody like almost, it, it won't be a phone, but it, it just somebody next to you just kind of filming. Yeah. So yeah. nothing else. It's just, Training session, we just talk, we crack up. and I mean, everything that you would do during a training session. Yeah, yeah. But we just showcase your story. I love it. I love it. You yeah, know? and and it takes a little getting used to. Like, um, like you, you know, you're a professional, so I, you know, throwing on the headphones, talking on this, it's not a big deal for you. But some people have a really yeah. big problem, right? But once they put the headphones on and once we just start <laughs> having a conversation, I just kind of hit record, you yeah. know, and just... It just changes the whole mm-hmm. right, whole dynamic. So just imagine, and I'm, I'm just kind of thinking out loud in, in my own head, going to, you know, going to Marietta, hanging out with Kenny, and then, you know, we're having dinner, we're talking, and there's a camera, like, right here. Yeah. And you're like, I'm trying to act natural. <laughs> 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 it takes a little getting used to, right? Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah. But especially, like like I said, with bigger, like, three, four cameras. Yeah. You know, you got the boom mic here. Yeah. You get, you're, you know, mic'd up. Yeah, that could be a little bit hard on people. Yeah. But I think with this newer log style that we're going to, in addition to what we're doing, yeah, I think this is going to make people feel comfortable. I because, love it, man. Like when you're rolling, you're not even going to think about it. Yeah. Afterwards, we're sitting against the wall just talking. Yeah. And they're just documenting that. They're not going to be in your face, but they're going to be documenting it. Yeah. That's so cool, man. You know? Yeah. So, so listen, um, we've been going for uh, about an hour and a half. And, um, wow, time flew by. Yeah, yeah. So, listen, uh, before we before we close out, I, I just want people to be able to find you, you know, and understand you you're, you describe the Matt Made Show really well, and uh, just kind of give people an idea of how to share their story, how to find you, where they can follow you, all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah. So, um, I am in Marietta, Georgia, right outside of Atlanta. So, if you guys ever want to come visit, we have a big facility. Uh, you guys can come and train with us. We have um, everything you need. Uh, my Instagram handle is Kenny Kim BJJ, and that's for everything: Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Kenny Kim BJJ. And then for our Matt Made, it's Matt Made. That's it. Perfect. You know, uh, they can find us there. Uh, all the the episodes and short stories are on YouTube, mm-hmm. so make sure you guys subscribe, share, and then on Instagram, you can see all our short stories on there too, Perfect. and even on TikTok. Perfect. Now, um, mattmade.com, you guys can log on. Not log on. You guys can just uh, get to mattmade.com. You guys can share your own story. There's a bunch of stories you got, different categories. Like, you can go in there and click, like, I want to hear about family stories. I want to hear about PTSD. Like, you can hear different stories, and it has an option for you to upload your own story. When you click on that, you'll get a video prompt of me 
like running you through the process. It takes like five minutes and you can record your own story. You can post it up. Who knows? You may be the next uh, Matt Made star and uh, yeah. we come out or you come out with me and we do the next uh, episode on you. Awesome, man. Awesome. All right. Well, listen, guys, um, uh, before oh, before we close out, hang on. I got to ask you the uh, lightning round of questions. Huh, okay. Lightning round. Okay. There are not no, to answer them fast? Yeah. There's no, okay. there's no wrong answers and you can pass. Okay. All right. Okay. Here we go. Uh, name a game show you think you could actually win. Jeopardy. Favorite cheat meal? Chocolate. What's the longest you've gone without brushing your teeth? Day. What's your go-to karaoke song? Um, Steven Warner. Nice. Uh, what's a dumb song you secretly like? Britney Spears. <laughs> 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 Do you sleep in or take a nap? Uh, take a nap. PlayStation or Xbox? None. DC or Marvel? None. What's your favorite childhood TV show? Um, Gilligan's Island. Travel into the future or back in time? Future. Rolling Stones or Elvis? Rolling Stones. Right, man. All right. Well, listen, everybody. Thank you guys for listening. And if you got something out of the podcast, if you liked it, please like, share, subscribe. We are on YouTube or on Instagram, Facebook, uh, TikTok, everything. Uh, the BJJ Foxcast. Kenny, thank you again for doing this, brother. Alex, thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. I can't wait to hear this. Yes, I'm, I'm excited, man. Thank you. All right, thank you.